हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर श्वेता आनंद एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल सिंप्लीफाइड डेंटिस्ट्री दिस वीडियो इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ वर्टिकल जॉ रिलेशन इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द मेथड्स व्हिच आर कॉमनली यूज्ड टू डिटरमिन वर्टिकल डायमेंशन एट रेस्ट एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मेथड्स व्हिच आर कॉमनली यूज्ड टू डिटरमिन वर्टिकल डायमेंशन ऑफ ओक्लूजन Now let's know about the methods of recording vertical dimension of occlusion. The methods employed to determine vertical dimension of occlusion can be classified as physiology and mechanical methods. In dentate individuals, the occlusal vertical dimension may not be established at centric relation, but for the complete denture patient, it must be established at centric relation. I have already made a video on centric relation you can watch that video in order to have a better understanding of centric relation I'll mention its link in the description box Now let's have a look on the different methods of recording vertical dimension of occlusion one by one So first let's have a look on the physiologic methods The first physiologic method is Nieswanger method or the physiologic rest position. This is the most commonly used method to establish occlusal vertical dimension. It uses the physiologic rest position, that is, the vertical dimension at rest, to determine the occlusal vertical dimension. Nieswanger stated that vertical dimension at occlusion is equal to vertical dimension at rest. minus freeway space which is 2 to 4 mm hence the physiologic rest position is first determined the contoured maxillary occlusal rim is placed in the patient's mouth and the vertical dimension at rest is determined using the facial measurements which i have already discussed earlier the mandibular occlusal rim is then inserted and it is trimmed and contoured until it meets the maxillary rim evenly the lower rim is adjusted till the facial measurement in occlusion is 2 to 4 mm less than that in rest position this will provide for the necessary interocclusal space or freeway space and it can be verified by asking the patient to part the lips without moving the jaws at rest position with the occlusal rim inserted Now let's have a look on the second physiologic method which is swallowing threshold. The concept that maxillary and mandibular teeth come into light contact at the beginning of the swallowing cycle is used as a guide to determine occlusal vertical dimension. The procedure involves building a cone of soft wax on the lower denture base in such a way that it contacts the upper occlusal rim when the jaws are open. Flow of saliva is stimulated by a piece of chocolate. The lower wax cone is softened and the patient is asked to repeat the action of swallowing. This will gradually reduce the height of the wax cone until it just touches the upper rim while swallowing. However, this method has not proven to be consistent. Phonetics is also one of the physiologic method which is used to determine the vertical dimension. Now let's see how according to Dr Earl Pound the space between the anterior teeth should not be more or less than 1 to 2 mm of clearance between the incisal edges of the teeth when the patient is unconsciously repeating the letter s For example the patient can be asked to have a rapid counting from 60 to 66 Dr Silverman termed this as peaking centric which was defined as the closest relationship of the occlusal surfaces and incisal edges of the mandibular teeth to the maxillary teeth during function and rapid speech this was later called as closest peaking level and finally as closest peaking space by Dr Silverman so the occlusal rims are inserted and height is adjusted until a minimum of 2 mm space exists when the patient pronounces the letter s the production of ch and j sounds also brings the anterior teeth close together 
when correctly placed the lower incisors should move forward to a position nearly directly under and almost touch upper central incisors if the distance is too large with any of the above method it means that too small a vertical dimension of occlusion may have been established and if the anterior teeth touch or click together when these sounds are made the vertical dimension is probably too great fourth physiologic method to record vertical dimension of occlusion is neuromuscular perception and it can be done in two ways either by using central bearing device or through maximum biting force so let's understand the process one by one first let's have a look on how we can measure by using central bearing device this utilizes the tactile sense of the individual to establish the vertical dimension an adjustable central bearing screw is attached to one of the rims and a central bearing plate is attached to the other rim the central bearing screw is placed first such that it is obviously too long or vertical dimension is increased progressively the screw height is reduced till the patient indicates that the jaws are overclosing that is there is reduced vertical dimension finally the screw is adjusted until the patient indicates that the length is comfortable the problem with this method is the presence of foreign objects in the palate and restriction of tongue space now let's have a look on the second method which is calculating the maximum biting force so boos demonstrated that the maximum biting force in an individual is registered at vertical dimension at rest so this method involved attaching a pressure indicating gauge which displayed the biting pressure to a central bearing plate and a screw on the occlusal rim as i previously described the device used is called bimeter and the maximum biting force is termed as power point so the screw is adjusted to increase or decrease the vertical dimension and the bite force is recorded with each insertion so boo stated that the vertical dimension of occlusion is the rest position or maximum force minus 2 mm fifth is aesthetics the vertical dimension also affects aesthetics when the vertical dimension is increased the skin of the lips appears stretched compared to the skin over the other parts of the face the skin appears more flaccid with a decreased vertical dimension the contour of the lips is also distorted with a change in vertical dimension the same problems can also occur if the labial contour of the occlusal rims is incorrect so first the labial contour of the occlusal rim should be developed and verified individually before evaluating the vertical relations now let's have a look on the mechanical methods of measuring vertical dimension of occlusion first is ridge relations so there are two ways in which ridge relations can be used first is by measuring the distance of incisive papilla from the mandibular anterior the and the second is by using ridge parallelism okay so now let's see how incisive papilla can be used to measure vertical dimension of occlusion the incisive papilla is a stable landmark whose position changes very little with resorption of the alveolar ridge the distance of the papilla from the incisal edges of the mandibular anterior teeth should be on an average approximately 4 mm in centric occlusion This is again just a guide to verify the vertical dimension and should be used with caution patients with severe resorption. Now the second one is ridge parallelism. Parallelism of the maxillary and mandibular ridges with a 5 degree opening in the posterior region provides a guide of appropriate vertical dimension. Since the clinical crowns of the anterior and posterior natural teeth have similar lengths their removal makes the residual alveolar ridges nearly parallel to each other however in most people the teeth are lost at different times and when a person finally becomes edentulous the residual ridges may no longer be parallel 
Now the second mechanical methods is by using pre-extraction records. These records can be prepared prior to the extraction of teeth and can be used as a guide to verify the vertical dimension of occlusion during the fabrication of complete dentures. Pre-extraction records can be maintained by using profile photographs, file silhouettes, radiographs, articulated casts, and facial measurements. Okay, so now let's have a look on how different pre-extraction records can be used to measure vertical dimension of occlusion. First is profile photographs. So photographs are made of the facial profile when the teeth were present in occlusion. These are enlarged to a life size and similar photographs are made during recording of jaw relations with the rims in occlusion. Distance between similar anatomic landmarks on the photographs taken when the teeth were present and during the jaw relation is compared. This allows verification of the occlusal vertical dimension. Second is profile silhouettes. So, the facial profile of the patient with natural teeth in occlusion before extraction can be carved out in a cardboard or contoured in a wire. The same can be placed on the face when the occlusal vertical dimension is being recorded with occlusal rims in position. This also allows verification of the vertical dimension. Third is radiographs. So cephalometric radiographs and radiographs of condyle in fossa have been used similar to previous methods before extraction and during recording jaw relations to verify the vertical dimension. Because of the radiation hazard and inaccuracies, they are now avoided. Fourth is articulated cast. In this, first the cast are mounted before extraction and then after the recording of the edentulous jaw relation in centric relation. The interage distance is compared between the two casts to verify the accuracy of vertical dimension. Fifth is facial measurements. In this case, tattoo marks are placed one in the upper half and the other on the lower half of the face. The vertical distance between the marks is measured with the teeth in occlusion before extraction. And then the measurement is compared with the occlusal rims in position during jaw relation procedure to determine occlusal vertical dimension. Now, the third mechanical method is the measurement of former dentures. So, the old dentures are placed in the mouth and using facial measurements, the vertical distance is measured. This can be done during the jaw relation appointment for the new dentures. This again can only be used as a guide to establish the vertical dimension for the new dentures as there could be loss of vertical dimension with the old dentures due to ridge resorption and wear of the artificial teeth. Now let's have a look on the effects of increase in vertical dimension. First is discomfort. As we all know chewing is a muscular mandibular movement acquired over a period of many years which the patient performs automatically and unconsciously. Increasing the vertical dimension alters the environment in which these unconscious movements take place and until the original condition is restored, discomfort will result. Second is trauma. The sudden and frequent contacting of teeth causes trauma to the denture bearing areas, especially under the lower denture where the area to resist pressure is less. Third is TMJ problem. The constant tooth contact will also affect the TMJ causing soreness and pain. Fourth is bone resorption. The increased vertical height does not allow the muscles that close the mouth to complete their contractions. They will continue to exert force to overcome this obstruction and this will lead to resorption of supporting tissues. Fifth is muscle fatigue. Due to the constant effort of the muscles to close the mouth, muscular fatigue will also occur. Sixth is clicking of teeth. The premature contact of teeth 
sooner than what the individual is used to will cause clicking of teeth. Seventh is facial distortion. There will be an inability to close the lips which will produce a strained expression and elongation of the face. Eighth is difficulty in swallowing and speech. The inability to close the lips will also cause difficulty in swallowing and speech. Now let's have a look on the effects of decrease in vertical dimension. First is inefficient mastication. The biting force exerted by the teeth in occlusion decreases which causes inefficient mastication. Second is cheek biting. The loss of muscle tone and reduced vertical height causes the flabby cheeks to become trapped during mastication. Third is TMJ problem. The patient has to often protrude the mandible to occlude the teeth and this causes pain and clicking in the TMJ. Fourth is facial distortion. Due to decrease in vertical dimension, nose appears closer to the chin. There is loss of lip fullness. Also there is loss of tonicity of muscles of facial expression. Face appears flabby and the patient appears older. Fifth is angular chelitis. The corner of the mouth form deep folds which are bathed in saliva and this becomes infected and sore. So that was it for today. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video then please like, share and comment down below and if you want more such contents then please subscribe to the channel Simplified Dentistry.